Hey friends, welcome back to another Friday Faith Foundations episode on the Robin Graham Show. I am Robin Graham, your host, a business growth strategist, author, and of course, podcast host. The Robin Graham Show is a top 1% globally ranked show. We totally appreciate your listening, your support, your love, your reviews, and all of that good stuff. I encourage you to head over to the show notes after you listen today because there are a plethora of links that you can access additional information as well as information on free resources so that you can start to grow your business the way you want to grow your business and achieve success without social media if that is indeed one of your priorities for the year. Just an aside, I am taking a social media sabbatical, so you won't be seeing me on social media for the next six weeks or so. All right, let's dive into today's episode. And this one is going to be deep. And I'm going to start by saying the title, Do Not Compromise Your Faith. Spiritual warfare is real. You must stand guard, discern, and be prepared to stand your ground. Do not compromise your faith by accepting the feel-good movement, rampantly shifting the mindset of society. Jesus did not die in vain. He died, overcame Satan, and rose again so that we can have eternal life. He did not suffer for us to ignore his commandments and to accept sin. He didn't suffer for nothing. Therefore, we must discern what we are consuming. We are to love, yes, absolutely, hands down. But it is not love to accept and condone sinful lifestyles. We are called to witness Jesus' love and grace, to bring others to him, to his righteousness, to his kingdom. In Matthew 22, 36 to 40, we learn the greatest commandment from Jesus himself. The disciples asked him, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Okay, there's a caveat, however. Accepting what secular voices are promoting are as good as love is not going to help anyone. In fact, it will endanger our souls and the souls of others. This applies to life and business. As, and as business owners, we're so fortunate. We don't have to comply to corporate rules and regulations. We have the luxury to stand sure-footed on our values and our faith if we're willing to. Jesus loves, but he does not tolerate sin. He calls us to repentance. Therefore, we must not accept sin as normal, as okay, as lovable. In Mark 3, 28, 29, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. Likewise, in Ephesians 4, 30, Paul commands, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Oh yes, Jesus gets us, and he is very aware of all we think, say, and do. He has compassion for us, but that does not mean he condones sin or wants us to accept it, to be right and true. Every sin we commit, we grieve the Holy Spirit, and not standing up for Jesus not standing up for what the Bible says is right and pure is a grievance against the Holy Spirit. We have to be cautious. Be aware of mixed messages and do not accept all you see, hear, and read as biblical truth. 
You must discern. And the only way to discern is to be in God's word. Satan is working overtime to distract us and to pull us away from the safety of Jesus. The safety that Jesus so generously suffered to provide for us. We are to love, not judge, but we are also not to condone or support ungodly choices and behaviors. Sin is real. We all sin, but we are not called to accept sin. We are called to repent and turn from sin. Don't let fear of a lack of acceptance keep you bound in the chains of sin. You have the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Use it. It is your armor for every decision you make. Seek his guidance. Yesterday, I had an inspiring conversation with another Christian entrepreneur, and he quoted 1 Peter 3.15. I wasn't sure what I would share today at that time, but when I read 1 Peter 3, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, encouraging me to share this verse and to share this particular message. As I sat down to write, the words just flowed out of me. So my new friend and I talked about secular society and how challenging it can be to discern the messages constantly being presented to us online, on television, on the radio, even in churches. We cannot accept all messages at face value. Quite often, there is a hidden meaning, and Satan is trying to convince us that Jesus accepts everyone, no matter their choices. Yes, he loves all. And sure, he accepts all. He created us in his image. He wants nothing more than to have a relationship with us. We are his and he loves us deeply. He will never leave us or forsake us. However, he very clearly tells us that he what he expects of us. And just like as parents, we discipline our children, he will discipline us. The Holy Spirit will nudge us and give us reminders to turn from sin. Your conscience will guide you. It, but it's your job to listen. It's your job to take action. It's your responsibility. If something is not biblical, if it cannot be proven acceptable by God and doesn't represent his character, or the way he created us to be, to live, to be faithful to him, it should not be accepted as right. I am preaching it today, you guys. The Holy Spirit really gave me a message to share. Be aware, friends. Do not compromise your faith to feel loved, accepted, and appreciated here on earth when your eternal Heavenly home could be in jeopardy. So let me leave you with this verse that inspired this message. This is 1 Peter 3, 8 to 18. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because this is you, this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who will harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience 
so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteousness of the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. We are to love. Absolutely, we are to love, but that does not mean that we have to condone sinful behaviors, sinful lifestyles, sinful messages, messages that go against what God's word says, his inerrant word, his perfect word that was breathed into life through the Holy Spirit. It is living and breathing. And it does not have errors. Stand firm, friends. Do not compromise your faith. Life on earth will be full of challenges, especially as Satan battles for his rule on earth. But we know that Christ already overcame him. Therefore, he has no power over you. He has no power over us. Stay close to God's word. Put on the armor of God. Call on the Holy Spirit. Be an example to follow. Share your hope with those who are curious and let God handle the rest. Lastly, I want to encourage you. If you feel like social media is creating distractions, leading you astray or causing spiritual conflict, it is perfectly okay to remove yourself from the platforms. You can achieve success without social media. Join me as I step away from social media as a Linton fast. Put a graphic up stating you are taking a break and you'll be back after Easter. If you want to go to Instagram, you can view the video that I put up. If you want extra support as you grow your business, be sure and download the free ebook, 37 Bible Verses Every Entrepreneur Needs to Reflect on and Live By. And while you are there, you can also download the free ebook, 10 Strategies to Grow Your Business Without Social Media. Now, I put a lot of links in the show note to other episodes that are related to this topic. So go ahead and check out the show notes, click the links, and I will see you here next week.